Well, I mean, the thing that they still do is they make you, you know, they're not just one dimensional. I know that they're a running football team, but, um, you know, we, we tried it two years ago, or last year. You know, that was our big emphasis is to stop the run, stop the run, stop the run. And, you know, it worked to win the game, but uh, there, there was a lot of problems there, too, you know, with some of the shots they took to Abadaris and things. So, you know, you, you still got to know that the most important thing, they're going to rely on him. They're going to run the football. Um, but you can't just be one dimensional in everything that you do. So, um, you know, it's still got to be well rounded in all the things we do, but he can't. Yes, he can be one of those guys that beat you. They're really good. They're good enough up front um, to be able to give him the opportunity to do those things, and, and they got a unique style. So, um, it poses a, a lot of problems. Luke, you have said before that it's easier to coach through adversity than through complacency. Is that true for this level of adversity that you guys have faced recently? I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure exactly what you're talking about, if, if, if all the outside things. And, um, you know, what that does is bring guys together. And, you know, I think we saw it when Braxton Miller went down. Um, to be honest with you, there was, a, there was an air that went out amongst the whole group. You know, you felt at practice. You know, and over, over the next couple of weeks and things, you just saw kind of guys. I think we grew as a team. I think that's the one thing you can really say is, is when those kinds of things happen, um, you grow as a team. You saw it Saturday in the game. I know we were, you know, we were struggling at times on defense, kind of up and down. And uh, when JT got uh, got hurt, the one thing I saw on the sideline was was a little fire, some energy, and, and, and a, a different passion that I'd seen from some of those guys, specifically the defensive guys. Um, you know, that's what we were excited about. Is there is there does the defense? Kind of take. I mean, not that you guys don't have confidence in Cardale. I know you do. But does the defense going into a game like this, do you take ownership and feel like you know I what, think you we do. need to we need to carry the load? Well, I mean, the great thing about what we've done, I think, this year is, is we've become a team. You know, and, and not the greatest times last year, but you know, heck, our offense was you know was was what it was, and Braxton was making things happen. And you know what we've gone through, obviously, with the with the transition of JT from early in the season, I think it's really helped us be a better team. And I think that's in the long run what's going to be the, the chance for us to be successful this Saturday uh, and the next, you know, hopefully game or two that we have to play after that is uh, we're going to grow closer and closer as a team, rely on one another uh, and do whatever is necessary to be successful. Luke, can you just talk about your interaction with Costa? <coughs> uh, what kind of kid he was? You know, I, I, to be honest, I, I can't. I don't have a, unfortunately, I don't have a, uh, a great relate. I didn't have a great relationship with him. Didn't know him all that well, other than um, us wrestlers always have some some little bond. Um, not that we talked about it a ton, we harassed about it a little bit, and um, but uh, regardless of that, you, 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 it was one of those guys that came out and made this team a better team because you know you, you can't be successful without the scout guys and those guys that bust it that never get to be seen on Saturday. So um, you know it, it, it's really tough. It's tough for everybody. Luke, you guys go up against Cardell in practice. What, what? Uh, I mean, you, you talk to the offensive guys, and he's more than just a third-string quarterback. It, and when you talk to them, what, what is it that he does that, you know, as you see, as see him from a defensive standpoint, that, that you guys feel comfortable with him? I'll be honest, I got a lot of confidence in Cardell, and and sometimes when you don't know him as well as maybe others, that, that uh, um, you you know guys' flaws. But the reality is, is. I mean, he can make every throw. He can he can run the football. There's a lot of things he can, can really really do. To be honest with you, who, who knows? You know, who was going to be the backup quarter, quarterback going into the season anyway? And uh, you saw how it worked out for JT because he got an opportunity. And uh, I'm I'm confident that Cardell would do the same thing. You know, he's got some different qualities that, that JT doesn't have. Um, you know, and JT's got some different qualities that Cardell doesn't have probably. But all in all, it's it's you know. The idea is you got to win one, and uh, you do whatever is best. You do what those guys do best, and you put them in positions. And you know, I know offensively, we'll do a great job of putting Cardell in positions that, that uh, he can be successful, and you know, highlight uh, the strengths that he has. So, I think defensively, for myself, I, we got the utmost confidence in Cardell. We go against him a lot, and and uh, he's not easy to defend. Um, it's been a long time since Ohio State was an underdog, um, and Coach Meyer didn't even know that. But you guys are underdogs in this game. Just your feelings on that. News to me too. Uh, <laughs> no idea. It's. Uh, I guess it's just part of the game. I mean, if if I if you didn't tell me that, I wouldn't know. Uh, doesn't change the way I think about anything. Um, you know, it, it is what it is. That's one man's opinion, just like a lot of those things. But uh, the reality is, on Saturday at eight o'clock, both of us got to play, and uh, you know it'll come down to, to to throwing and running and tackling, and, and it's not going to change. So whether who's favored or who's not. Um, I don't think that really changes the, the outlook or how we how we approach things at all. Luke Taylor Speaking Becker of, said, uh, you know, he, he saw Costa on, th on Tuesday like everybody else did. He seemed to be in a great mood uh, after practic practice, et cetera. Uh, uh, seemed to be in a good mood that night. Did you notice anything odd about Costa on 
no. on Tuesday from your vantage point? No, I, again, I, I, I don't. I didn't know him well enough, other than you know, you know, harass me a little snide comments here and there, you know, mm -hmm. the wrestling side of things. But uh, you know, had had some guys that you know in the linebacker group that were, you know, that hung out with him or with him. So nothing unusual, nothing of that. Um, you know, I mean, obviously, I wouldn't speculate on anything. It's just, it's yeah. just tragic. Luke Joel Stave, what do you see in him? And, and I understand that he's improved. Yeah, a lot. I mean, it, I think he might be completing eighty percent of his balls the last two games. And um, here's a guy that's been through some adversity. Obviously, injuries started two years ago, I think. You know, then had an injury, kind of got benched, didn't start at the beginning of the year. Um, maybe similar to what JT, you know, and, and you gain some confidence. And anybody that's got a good running game has, has got a chance to be successful. And uh, you know, teams are going to stack the box, and you know, you make the throws you need to make, and uh, you know, he manages the football game. And that's what that's what great Wisconsin quarterbacks have done for a long time. And that's what you really see him doing here late in the year. From a coordinator's perspective, you've heard Urban and Tom talk a lot about the quarterback here being a product of the guys around him. Is that unusual to see this day and age? You know, a lot of times I think, uh, at least from our untrained eyes, it looks like the, the, the offense is a product of the quarterback. No, I don't know. I mean, we try to you try to say the similar things on defense too. You know, the middle linebacker is a product of what we do, um, but you can only do what those guys can do. So, I mean, that's why you know that's why they you know our offense does such a great job is really they they you know they kind of nitpick and we don't do the same things with with uh, you know, with Braxton Miller that we do with JT Barrett. They probably won't do exactly the same things with, with Cardell Jones as they do with JT Barrett. So uh, you have to be able to adapt. And you know, we've gone through that defensively with some things that we have to do. So uh, I don't know either one. I think they're both a product of each other. And you know, with great coaching and the things that you do, it's just still a product of the things that are around you as well. So you know, a couple years ago, it wouldn't have mattered. You know, without Braxton being able to run the football, you know, having maybe one wide receiver with any experience, you, know, you can go all the way back to Terrell Pryor's first year. I mean, Todd Beckman was going to be it. And the reality was, is, you know, we lost B.D. Wells. You know, your offensive line was not as, as good as they had been. And you needed a guy that could make some things happen with his feet. So, you know, you have to be able to adapt and adjust. How would you defend a six foot five, 250 pound quarterback? <laughs> I wouldn't let him get going, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, one that can throw the ball 75 yards, too. So, um, you know, there, there's, you know, they're not going to change what they do, I can assure you that. You know, they're successful for why they, you know, for what they've done. Look, a lot of good defenses have tried to shut down Melvin Gordon this year and haven't really been successful. You're, based on what do you think you guys can do it? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, we look at last year, uh, you look at two years ago, I mean, they've had great running backs there. You know, I'm not sure that, you know, I mean, Monte Ball, not to say that he's not as good as Monte Ball or better than Monte Ball, but the reality is they've had great ones. And, uh, We've had success against it. You know, it comes down to playing team defense. It's not like we're saying, okay, you know what, last year we would have just put Ryan Shazier on him and spied him. You know, or hey, on a great quarterback, you're going to put a guy on him. You don't do that. In order to stop a running game, you've got to have great team defense. You've got to surround the ball. You've got to build a wall at the line of scrimmage. You've got to swarm tackle because not one guy is going to bring him down. I mean, there's going to be opportunities in the game where one man is going to have to bring him down in open space. And that's the difference between big plays and, and you know and ones that are six, seven, eight yards. You know, because you're not going to completely. He's going to get his carries. He's going to get his touches. You know, he's going to have some opportunities. And what it comes down to is leverage and the ball and tackling. For the defense, is last year's Big Ten championship game kind of y'all's remember the Alamo moment, or is it? Do you even bring it up? I mean, uh, the success Michigan State had running and throwing the ball. Hmm. Luke. The five minutes ago in the third quarter, yeah. you know how many yards rushing they had? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just asking. Do you yeah. know? But Langford went I, right I, up the I, middle for I, the clinch okay, touchdown. Okay, I'm asking you a question. Yeah. Do you know how many yards they had? Uh, I'm guessing it wasn't a lot, but uh, 15. Uh, yeah, 15. Okay, and things broke down, and we didn't, you know, didn't That's end, what I'm the, end about, the thing yeah. well. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I don't know. You know, you call the Alamo. I don't know. I'm not. Yeah. And some of these guys aren't old enough, and they probably didn't go through <laughs> enough history classes like you did uh, <laughs> to remember the Alamo. Yeah. But uh, no, we take every game one step at a time, and. and we know what the, the, the challenges are in front of us. If we dwell upon the past, you know, it, it's it's not going to help us. Um, you know, we've had enough adversity this year that we can we can rely on, and, and obviously the adversity, different things that we've had within the, within the family. That uh, I don't think we need to reflect back on some of those situations. They are what they are from last year. There's some different guys, um, you know, but we got plenty of motivation. I don't know that the Alamo is is something we're going to refer to a lot this week. Well, yeah, but I meant as, a, as an analogy, not as the actual Alamo. But I want to ask you, last year y'all were He's having trouble. He's going to ask trouble. me about the Alamo Bowl next. Everybody knew y'all were having trouble defending the pass last year. Y'all seemed to have shored that up big time this year. And now we're asking you about defending the run. And yeah. here you are going against 
you know, the nation's leading rusher. Yeah. The irony of that's very interesting. I mean, it is, it is. And that's why as you really go back and you start to reflect and you look back, you have to be good in all phases of the game to be successful. You know, you can't be, well, we're great against the pass. Well, guess what that probably means? You stink against yeah, the run. Yeah. Well, we're great against the run, and guess what? You stink against the pass. It's just like any offense. Well, we led the nation in passing. I bet you if you led the nation in passing, you weren't real good because you got no balance. And it's, it's you know, football's no different life. If you don't have any balance, you got no chance to be successful in any things you do. So, um, you know, I think that uh, we see that at times, and, and sometimes we get too focused on certain things, and, mm -hmm. you know, you become, you know, you become weaker in other areas. So we, we know we've got to be able to be strong in both areas in order to be successful and to be where we want. The standards here are extremely high. Uh, they're not going to change. And, uh, you know, we want to be the best in both of them. Look, look, looking back, though, I mean, obviously for those that were at, uh, at the Big Ten title game, it was a painful loss and, and cost this team a lot. For the guys who were there, how important is it that you're back and you, and you get another shot at this on this stage? Oh, it's, and his redemption. I mean, does that even play? I, I don't know. I mean, you know, again, it, this this is a one-game season, and uh, you know, you always draw upon your your experiences, you know, and and I don't think you you dwell upon losses, but you do remember. And and what the greatest thing that losses can do is they can be motivating factors for you, you know. And, and you'd like to say that that is, a, that is that is something that these guys reflect on, but. To, these guys, they are so motivated. They do everything we ask them to do. They battled through the entire season. I mean, I don't know that there's a whole lot of other motivation that they need. You know, really what they need to be able to do is focus on what it is that they need to do to be successful in this game, not dwell upon those other things, because um, it's a different it's a different animal. And, uh, you know, I, mean, I don't know as us as coaches can sit there and dwell upon it and worry about, you know, worry about the past. Uh, you know, we got to get our guys ready to be successful on Saturday night. Yeah, you're, you're, you're. There seemed to also be a, a little bit of a chippiness between these two programs when uh, when Bielema was there and everything. I mean, is there any carryover? I mean, it, you, oh. you get the feeling you guys don't like each other. Well, I mean, yeah, it, it, it's it, the great thing about the Big Ten is there's some great rivalries. Not that you play them. I mean, obviously, that with the separations of the of the of the uh, divisions now, you don't play them every year. But I know when I was in school, it was it was a big rivalry. You know, and it's only a rivalry because they've been very very good at what they do, and obviously we've been very good at what we do, and. Um, those were, those were kind of create those rivalries, but you know, there's a lot of people out there that say Ohio State's their number one rivalry. So uh, that's just a part of the game that you're going to always have when you're here. Luke, Your you said it'll be leveraged to the ball and tackling when it comes to Gordon. Yeah. Have you been happy the past couple weeks with that? Uh, obviously, two weeks two weeks ago it was not. You know, that was that was the big issue with you know when when uh, against Indiana we lost we lost leverage on the one play and uh, you know it goes for 90. Other than that, I mean, I know they had a late one for you know he had a late one on 50 yards, but you know there's 100 and 40 yards on on two carries, um, one being 90, and that's the biggest thing. That's the thing you see with Gordon. You know, I mean, the the teams that have done as good a job as they can, even last week, you know, they didn't let him out. You know, and and if you can force him to stay inside, and you know, he's going to get some yards. But you know, you got you got 11 guys that got to help to get his ass down. Can you imagine 400 yards rushing? I mean, he's hit that this year. I don't want, uh, no, I don't want to imagine 400 yards rushing. Uh, you don't rushing. experience I mean, it firsthand, I know. I mean, I, I've been a part of one that's not been like that, and, and I don't ever want to relive it. Um, <laughs> and But if I can reflect on the positives, I remember when Eddie George rushed for 313 yards. And, uh, you know, it, it. I know as a defense that there's nothing more of a sick feeling than to, than to see things like that. But, uh, you know, that's a part of the game. And, and you're starting to see it a little bit more. And uh, why is that? I don't know. I think it's the fundamentals of defense uh, that, that are really truly breaking down. And, and heck, you're almost starting to see some of it in the NFL. Like, you know, not that I ever watched, but all of a sudden you look at him, you guy rush for 175 yards, or what? It's like, wow. You know, is, is there a carryover to the, the fundamentals of defense breaking down because everybody wants to see offense? We'll change the game some more. You know, we'll probably say you put a flag on a quarterback or you can't do something, but you can still blow out the knee of the defensive end and chop him and <laughs> cut the D tackle and, you know, do all those things that don't really matter if you, you know, those guys have a life expectancy of four years. But, uh, you know, it, it's a part of the game. So it's. Do you really think that? What's that? Do you really think <laughs> <laughs> Luke, you, your guys, they've talked repeatedly about how important it is to improve throughout the season. Mm -hmm. Have you, as a defense, done that? And is this game the ultimate measure of that? Just because of where it falls in the schedule. I mean, you got to play your best ball at the end of the year, and you know the, the stakes are going to get higher at the end of the year. The teams are going to get better at the end of the year, and we said that from the beginning of the year. Don't let you know ESPN or somebody evaluate you and you know, tell you who how good you are. We're going to evaluate on three things, and we've said it all year. You know how you work. You know the fundamentals you see on film. You know, and then how you take care of one another. 
and at the end of the year you can add up all the stats and figure out you know where you stand and where you know in the big picture of things but the reality is we want to see the improvement and uh you see it. You see it. I think last week you know, we weren't we weren't as sharp as what you know fundamentally as what you would like to have seen from from our entire group, um, but in spurts they were, they were really good. Luke, you uh, talk about how good Gordon is, but uh, you know it all starts with their line. Is this the best line you guys will face this year? I, I would say yeah. I would say yeah. I mean I, I don't know if there's a group that does is better at what they do. You know, I mean, you've had Wisconsin groups that are different t at times, and you know, you could say some other groups. You know, maybe, you know, even even Minnesota had a good group. Now they were really good at what they did, um, but I don't know if there's a bigger, more physical group that that uh, does what they do uh, as well as they do. And obviously, Gordon is a great back, but he's not going to be able to do it all on his own. And uh, it, it's a it's quite a product of the of the system, and they've done a great job with it.